I'm really delighted to introduce our speaker today, Mr. Kevin DeSanctis, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of the Revel Entertainment Group. You could not live in this area, you could not live in New Jersey, you could not live in the Northeast, you could not live in the United States, North America, or much of the world without hearing a great deal about the opening of Revel. In this area, we are reveling in the opening of Revel. And it's just really wonderful, after 30 years of experience in managing and developing gaming properties, he now brings Revel to Atlantic City. It's my great pleasure to introduce Mr. Kevin DeSanctis. Thank you. It's a nice crowd. First, thanks very much for the introduction. Uh, it is truly an honor and a privilege for me to be here with you all today. Uh, I have to admit that this has been a very tough assignment for me. Uh, this is not what I generally do. I know absolutely nothing about commencement addresses. I've been to one that was about 40 years ago. It was mine. I couldn't tell you who spoke, and I couldn't tell you what they said. And I suspect 40 years from now, some of you will be saying the same thing. That's OK. I figured a, a bit of research was in order, so like we all do today, I went on the internet. Uh, I read a few commencement addresses, and I watched a few commencement addresses. There were a couple of comedians who told jokes. I don't tell jokes, so that's not going to work out. There was a physicist who talked about his book. I'm in the hospitality industry. You're not going to hear about physicist stuff today. And then there was an actor. I had to watch this one about two or three times because I had no idea what he was talking about. So I went to a friend of mine. He's a bit of an academic, if you will. Uh, I thought he'd have some insight on the matter. And I asked him the question, so what exactly is the goal of a commencement address? And he looked at me and he said, I can tell you exactly what the goal of a commencement address is. It's to make the president of the college happy. So I hope this works. <laughs> so there's only one word that really matters at a commencement, right? It's congratulations. Uh, the rest of it is sort of irrelevant. So let me start by expressing my congratulations. Congratulations on the culmination of a very long journey. But it's really been the beginning of a new one. Now, I said there's only one word that matters, but this wouldn't be a commencement address if I didn't say more words than that, right? So I've learned through my research, uh, it's a long standing tradition for a commencement address to be very long and very boring. I intend to meet you halfway on this one. Okay? This will not be long. Yeah, thanks. Now, among the graduates today are some of the professionals. I have one recommendation. We need to lose these tassels, but it's OK. <laughs> among the graduates today are some of the prof professionals that work at Revel or have interned at Revel. Uh, each of them know that in order to be selected for employment, there is a criteria that each candidate must meet. We call them deal breakers. There's five of them. It's humble, hungry, smart, simple, and nice. From our perspective, regardless of the technical talent of an individual, if they can't consistently live those deal breakers, we don't believe they'll ever be able to be successful at Revel. So I think it's fitting to keep my message today very simple and to start with a very, very simple fact. I wasn't supposed to be here today, and Revel was expected to fail. 
It's that simple. I'd love to tell you that we'd, we didn't because of some particular talent or genius that allowed us to outwit every adversary and overcome every challenge. But the truth is, we didn't fail because failure was never our concern. We always accepted that possibility. We rejected one concept, and that was quitting. Simply put, failure was totally acceptable. Quitting was not. There's a common misperception that failure is a bad thing. But we would argue that failure is a critical part of the learning process. Anyone who has ever snow skied knows that if, if you're attempting to ski new terrain, whether it's bumps or whether it's steeps, you're going to take some spills. But the result is that you ultimately become a much better skier. We would argue that if you're not failing, you're not pushing past your comfort zone. You're not stretching yourself, you're not growing, and ultimately, you're not living. Now, there is certainly no certainty of success in this life. It's just not the way it works. If you let the fear of failure hold you back, it will be very difficult to find out what you're really capable of. One of my favorite TV commercials of all time is one that features Michael Jordan. And in it he says, I've missed over 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the winning shot and I missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that's why I succeed. Between 2008 and 2010, at Revel, we were failing on multiple levels. All but life safety construction was halted. We laid off thousands of tradesmen and women, thousands. Our financial partner, Morgan Stanley, announced that they were going to exit the project. And after five trips to Beijing in one year, a deal that I worked on to finance the entire project, and we had negotiated with the Export-Import Bank of China, fell apart. Essentially, when Morgan Stanley walked away, XM also walked away. They felt they had lost face. A deal that I had spent a year developing completely evaporated, and with it, the future of Revel. The project was officially on life support. I don't think there was a person who knew anything about the project that gave it a chance for survival. The newspapers wrote incredibly negative stories. People called me delusional, which isn't really far from the truth, but <laughs> I took offense to it anyway. And in general, the consensus was that we were never going to complete the project. Long story short, after putting together a new financing deal, a lot of hard work and effort, on Fe February 17th of last year, we completed the pro project financing. Now for us, it was the culmination of one long journey and the start of another. It was a new beginning. It's no different than where you guys find yourselves today. Soon after we resumed construction, we learned that during the financial collapse of 2008, almost every large project in the country was put on hold or completely abandoned. And when we restarted construction in 2011, our project was the largest commercial construction project in the United States. Our grand opening's three weeks away. But for us, it's just a new beginning. Our future is completely undetermined, as is yours. Ultimately, your life will be exactly what you make of it. Push yourself, test your limits, don't let the fear of failing get in your way. And remember, life begins at the end of your comfort zone. Congratulations, good luck. Thank you much. Mr. Ellis, it's my distinct pleasure to grant this special acknowledgement to Kevin DeSanctis for his leadership and public service. 
The award reads, the Board of Trustees and President Herman J. Sotkamp, Jr. present the Richard Stockton College of New Jersey Distinguished Service Award to Mr. Kevin DeSanctis, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Revel Entertainment. In recognition of Mr. DeSanctis's philanthropic work, the instrumental role he has played in the future development of Atlantic City, and his exemplary leadership, public service, and outstanding contributions to Stockton College, the community, and the state of New Jersey.